finally it arrived the sapphire nitro plus rx5700 xt this is a big old box and it's a big old card it's already in my machine because i was so excited when it came i just whacked it in there so let's go check out what the nitro plus is all about Running the new AMD RDNA gaming architecture using the 7 nanometer processor, the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 5700 XT has 2560 stream processors that run at a boost clock of up to 2010 megahertz, a game clock of 1905 and plus 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. The card supports up to 4 screens with 2 display ports and 2 HDMI 2.0. It's a VR friendly card and requires 2 8 pin power connectors and we suggest a 650 watt power supply. So the Nitro Plus is equipped with the Trix cooling solution, not only does it look great, but it's incredibly efficient at keeping your car cool under heavy loads. The Trio setup each has dual ball bearing fans to ensure optimal airflow with two larger fans rotating anti-clockwise and the smaller fan in the middle running clockwise. Every little small detail on this cooler is to increase airflow and keep noise levels to a minimum. With the intelligent fan control, it always ensures your graphics card is always in perfect balance between these states. Like a lot of the other cards that Sapphire produce, you can easily switch out the fan with the Innovative Quick Connect fan system. This allows you to replace a fan head yourself without having to send the whole card back for repairs. But there is an optional upgrade designed specifically for the Nitro Plus RX 5700 XT that offers clear fan heads with ARGB for more personalization. These obviously pair up with the other AGBR features on the card such as the back palette and the logo. But there's also a 3 pin header on the tail of the card to help sync up your motherboard with the other LEDs throughout your case to give you even more customization options. While it's a given that rock solid performance together with a robust cooling solution is the primary objective when designing cards in the Nitro Plus series, Sapphire also appreciates that many gamers take great pride in their gaming rigs from a visual perspective, showcasing their components in shiny RGB filled cases with tempered glass windows. That's while a great deal of care has been put into the aesthetics to make this card feel like a chameleon to fit into any environment without compromising the card's performance and functionality. Sapphire aims for incredibly high reliability in all of their card's DNA with long life capacitors, fuse protection, a robust PCB, VRM cooling and memory cooling solutions designed to keep one of the hottest parts of the next generation cards under control with industry leading solutions. Sapphire have also improved on the dual BIOS switch which you can find on the side of the card that allows you to switch from performance mode to silent mode and now into software mode as well. This allows you to be able to switch your BIOS settings in the Trix software and saves you having to open up your case each time that you perhaps want to switch to your different BIOS settings. Exploring more of the newly enhanced Trix software update with its deceptively simple interface, you can check out the overview of your card specs, monitor your hardware performance, run fan checks, enable and change your LED themes in the Nitro Glow options, and with the Trix Boost tab, increase game performance by downscaling multiple resolutions by using the percentage slider. Of course you'll lose some image quality, but downscaling at high resolutions such as 4K and 1440p by 15%, you'll hardly see the difference most of the time. It's very hard unless you're really pixel peeping on your screen to see if there's much of a difference. But what I can tell you is that you'll definitely feel the performance boost when running around in your favourite games. Also, if you have a keen eye for details, you can always turn on the Radeon Image Sharpening tool to help pop out those subtle details, and it works brilliantly when you've downscaled a resolution as well. It's compatible with DX9 and DX12 games, and this incredible tool almost has zero performance loss, meaning you can just simply leave it running and enjoy those extra details without having to worry about losing any extra frames. As many of you already know, increasing frame rate is one of the best ways of reducing input latency and having a low input latency is what makes gaming feel responsive and ultimately more immersive. Radeon Anti-Lag is a driver level feature that also works to help reduce any input latency by up to a full frame, which could work out as much as 16.7 milliseconds when playing around at 60 FPS. While 16 milliseconds may not actually seem like a long amount of time, you have to remember that many gamers will spend an awful lot of money just to shave off a tiny amount of input latency, such as knocking off a couple of milliseconds by going with a high-end monitor, picking up an expensive gaming mouse to knock off a couple more, and yet, in many cases, we're able to shave off many times the amount of lag simply by flipping a switch on the Radeon overlay. Jumping into some gameplay benchmarks now, I loaded up the most recent Gears of War game number 5 and turned up the details to Ultra and then got testing. I first wanted to test out the three standard resolutions 4K, 1440p and 1080p. 
And here you can see some really decent results. At 4K, we've got 38 frames. At 1440p, 73 frames per second. And at 1080p, 105. I then downscaled all of those resolutions by 15% on the Trix software and then ran the benchmark again. And at 1836p, which is the 4K downscaled resolution, we got 51 frames. Then we got 1224p, we got 91 frames per second. And at 916p, we got 110 frames per second. As expected with the Sapphire Nitro Plus, 1080p and 1440p gaming, no problems whatsoever. This card murders it. 4K resolutions are also incredibly manageable thanks to the AMD feature set alongside with the Trix Boost software. These incredible tools give you a lot of room to maneuver and it's always something that's in your back pocket in case you need it as well. It's fantastic. I really recommend you investigate those tool sets a lot if you get this card. Also, the Tri-X Cooler is fantastic. It maintains great performance on long gaming sessions. I think the hottest I got, the car to was 73 degrees, but maintained low level noise as well at the same time. I still haven't heard the card over my case fans. I probably need to get those replaced. Speaking of that, case features and also customization in there with the colored themes is absolutely fantastic in the Nitro Glow. You can really tweak out the software to fit this into any theme that you're going for. And because of the clean sleep design of the card, it would fit in pretty much most cases anyway without any RGB. But the fact that you have those customizable options in there, especially the replaceable fans of the ARGB too, you really got a lot to play with on this card with customization and going for the right theme for you. All I would say is just investigate the size of the card before buying because it is quite a big card. So make sure to check out the dimensions of that. Always do your homework, always research and look at other people's reviews before buying as well. And uh, I thoroughly enjoy playing on this card and I look forward to getting a new case pretty soon so I can match it with this card and make it all look shiny and pretty too. But anyways, good luck, have fun out there and uh, I'll hopefully see you again soon.